What is up, everybody? Thanks for clicking on this video. And today we are going to talk about the strongest fighting inshore fish. Well, some would argue so maybe one of the strongest fighting inshore fish. They're running today. They're in big numbers. They're feeding aggressive. They're fun to catch. They're everywhere. Before we go any further, I just want to thank each and every one of you for clicking on this video and liking this video. Well, you haven't liked it yet, but you can go ahead and like it. Go ahead and click like. I'll wait on you guys. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, then uh, hit subscribe, notif bell notification, all that stuff helps the channel out a lot. And I'll wait. I'll give you a few seconds to, uh, to do that. And, um, you know, today's my birthday, so I'm drinking out of my happy birthday mug. Today's really not my birthday. All right, so one of the strongest, if not the strongest, inshore fighting fish, pound for pound inshore fighting fish. One of my favorite fish to catch, okay? My number one love is a flounder. But, you know, uh, comes up real close is drum. I love catching drum. Whether it's black drum or red drum, I just really enjoy catching them. And right now, they are moving in vast numbers, especially the big uglies. The big, big 20, 40 pound fish, black drum, big uglies, big lips, ugly face. They're moving everywhere and they're feeding real aggressively. So it's really easy to hook up, really easy to catch. But you gotta, you have to know the areas to go catch them. You have to intercept them when they're in and around these body waters. Now, they're passing through the bays right now. They're passing through some of the deep channels. And a lot of places where offer structure, whether if it's a hill or a, a, a mound underneath the surface of the water or it's a drop off, they're, they're running along those deeper areas and those deeper cuts around the jetties. Um, like I said, around the cuts in the bays and the bayous, they can be caught everywhere from here locally. We have Galveston jetties and free and surfside jetties, and they're all along there. They're all along the coastal front, on the beach front. You can catch them from the pier, the rock groins. They're everywhere right now. And there's some very easy ways how you can catch them, and there's also some very easy ways how you can miss the bite. But I'm going to defer some of this information that I have for you. I'm going to defer to a friend of mine, Captain Cody Dunn. He, uh, let's try to call him real fast. Let's see if we can get him on the phone and see if we can get some expert advice. All right, so Cody is calling us back. What is up? What is up, Captain Cody Dunn? Hello. Hello, Captain Cody Dunn. What are you doing? Am I on video? It sounds like you're doing a video. Yeah, you are on video, actually. I was calling you. So now you're on video. Okay. What's what, up? What are you doing? Well, I'm getting ready to go into a meeting with uh, Greg Ball over here at Sea Star Base Galveston. Well, it sounds like you're busy then. It sounds like you're too busy to answer some some top secret questions I, that I, I was going to have. I've got, I've got answers, but hit me. Do you got answers? I, I can talk. All right. I got. I have a question now. Okay. All right. says I'm, I'm talking about the strongest inshore fighting fish. That we have in Texas, the two strongest inshore fighting fish, in my opinion. Now, excluding gar, because nobody likes gar, okay. except you, because you're weird. But is big uglies? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw one at you that you're not thinking about. Which one am I not thinking about? A piggy perch? Uh, a 200 pound bull shark. Well, that's not fair okay because that's a shark they are they are in the bay and they are the hardest fighting fish in the bay. but we're not we're not talking about oh, no, yeah, we're, we are. we're not talking about sharks that are running right now we're talking about big uglies and bull reds <laughs> all right uh bull red all day long and stingray uh, i've got some so i'm uh, stingray will probably go over both of them cody this is this is my content video, okay? We're not changing it. We're not changing it for bull sharks and stingrays, okay? Well, they're, they're we're, in the we're, we're talking. They're the hardest fighting fish. No, they're not. They're not a fish. They're a ray. <laughs> okay. They're they don't they're not they're not shaped like a fish, okay? They look nothing okay. like a bubble guppy, okay? Uh, no, I'll say I'm gonna okay. say bull ray, uh, bull ray, 
Bull Red and Jack Crevel. Bull Reds and Big Uglies, the two big drums. All right. All right, just out of them two. Just those two. Okay. Bull Red, for sure. Well, I'm this is not versus Cody. This is we're target we're targeting Bull Reds and Big yeah. Uglies right now. All right. Okay. Focus. What is what is the best rod? We've had this conversation the other day, but what is the best rod and reel setup? Not not necessarily brands, although you could throw that out there, but just like size. Like so, if I'm gonna go shopping and I want to buy a setup to catch a big ugly or a bull red, what am I looking at? Rod and reels. We'll say spinning rod and reels combo. Okay. What are we yeah, looking spinning at? Spinning rod. I would say a, a forty-five hundred to you know you could go sixty-five hundred. It's a little bit overkill, but. Probably thirty five hundred to fifty five hundred on spinning reel. Okay. Preferably like a spin fisher. That's a pin. Pin. Spin fishers are great for durable. I mean, then you, you know Shimano's are just crazy high though. You know you got a a Saragossa, then a Twin Power, then the Stella, which is you know twelve hundred dollars or something. So, but uh, yeah, I'd say thirty five hundred. I mean, I've caught them on twenty five hundred. You know. Yeah. But it's it's a fact. Yeah, you're in for a battle, right? So the lighter the setup. What about a rod and reel? What are we looking at as far as like, I mean, the real uh, rod rise, uh, wa rod wise. You sound like me. I am. Rod rise. Yeah. What are we? What are we rod looking rise, at? I'm gonna say, you know, a medium heavy to heavy action. You know me. I'm gonna. Me personally, everything I have is heavy action. Right. But uh, medium heavy to heavy action. You know, seven footer or seven and a half footer. That way you, you get some long casting distance, plus also you got some backbone, and you, know, you can play on with it a little bit too. You got a little fast hit, so you can play with it. Right, because these are the strongest inshore fighting fish. Yeah, which these, would be the yeah, bull shark. Yeah, which is, we're not talking about shark. You can't reinvent <laughs> this conversation. You can't reinvent it. Okay, okay. next up, right. what is the best rig? Do you prefer a Carolina rig? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because they're on the bottom. You know, right. So... You know, and, and they don't feel the bite, like your line and stuff with the Carolina rig. They can run with your bait and stuff and not feel the weight as much, which is not a really big deal with them. Some fish it is, but Carolina rig, you can do, you know, the get her done rig with the extra long dropper loop on it. That way it kind of flows down to the bottom right next to the weight too. But I, 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 the Carolina rig is the most traditional, and that's what most people use. You can also use what, what is uh, called a, a knocker rig even too which is a weight that just goes down and, and then hits at, at the, uh, you know, the end of your hook on your knot. The lead just slides down onto that, too. That's a real popular rig for snapper fishing and for, you know, fishing on the bottom. Now, do you... What, I prefer the Carolina rig. What, what size test line do you like to use? Leader line. I mean, you know, if I'm fishing for a bull... Like the other day when we were in the tournament, all of my leader line was 80-pound... Uh, uh, usually I use fluorocarbon, but not in a tournament like that for grub. It doesn't really matter. They're not line shy. So I was using 80-pound monofilament. Okay. And uh, then most of my line is 65 to, you know, 100. But 65 is what I'd recommend. That way you have plenty of line on your spool, and you can throw it a long ways. Once you get up to 100, you can't throw it as far. So 65 is plenty. I mean, you can go smaller than that too, but – yeah. I kind of I kind of overkill everything. I want to be prepared and be able right. to stop the fish. If I get a big fish on, if I get a you know a big bull shark on, you don't want you. Yeah. We're not we're not Cody. We're not talking about. It sounds like you need to go bull shark fishing. Okay, okay. And what about hook size? I know you like the gamagatsu. Mm -hmm. Do you like a circle hook? Do you like J hooks? What do you like on the? Yeah. I, I use a circle hook mm -hmm. uh, just because most of the time it's in the boat in the rod holder and the circle hook will set the hook on its own for the fish. You know. Um, uh, yeah, circle hook. I'd use uh, like a number five to number seven odd circle hook. I'm a got to, and I like the three X six. I don't like the, the smaller. I'll go with the three X just in case you get a the one thing that we've been talking about that I can't talk about anymore. Just in case you get one of them on, it won't straighten the hook. Out. <laughs> they're they're not in the ocean anymore. They left. They went to Florida for the winter. Or actually, although it's summer, don't worry about that part. Minor details. Minor yeah. details. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and bait would be uh, number one, you know, for black drum, blue crab. Bull reds really like blue crab also. Uh, shad is 
probably the best for the reds, but it's good for both also. So shad, blue crab, mullet, it's kind of a little secret fish bites. Works very well for black Well, rum. don't tell anybody your really secrets, great. okay? Yeah, well, you can cut that out. <laughs> What what size weight do you do you start off with? Because we talked about this. A lot of it depends yeah, on the current. A deal that but a lot, a lot of really good fishermen don't realize that. But this is a kind of a deal that a lot of people don't think about. Especially right now during the black drum run, we have super strong currents. And if you drop down to eight ounce weight, eight ounce weight is heavy. That's big for most people. Bigger than a lot of people even use. You drop down to eight ounce weight, and you put a whole blue crab on in this five mile an hour current or whatever it is right now and the, the blue crab's going to act like a parachute and it's going to raise that weight up off of the bottom and you're just going to go way out behind the boat and you're going to be fishing in the midwater column thinking that you're on the bottom and you're not fishing for black drum and bull reds anymore you're fishing the midwater column which bull reds do come up in the midwater column but yeah so a lot of people don't realize that so in a super strong current i'll use 16 ounces Maybe even up to a pound. Yeah. Just wow. To keep my bait on the bottom, directly below the boat, not seventy-five yards out behind the boat with all that, you know, excess line. Right. I mean, especially when you're marking the fish underneath your boat and you think you're down there fishing for them. Yeah. Yeah, and you're not even close. You're like, you know, yeah, five, ten feet above their head. People, yep. Yeah, a lot of people miss that when they're fishing. They'll drop down a six-ounce weight, and use a half a crab in this strong current, and they're. They're, they're not on the bottom, I promise you that. I, I, I know when I'm on the bottom, and I've used six ounce weights before, and I 100% wasn't on the bottom when I was fishing for it. I put a bigger weight on them, and like, I feel it hit the bottom. Six ounce, you don't feel it hit the bottom. Well, yes, sir. Well, awesome, Captain Cody. Thank you for enlightening us and giving us some of your expertise. I appreciate you. Yep, anytime, Miss Sonny, you could just call in to talk to my buddy, and I've been. You know, you get interviewed. I just have to hear your voice. You know, some mornings I just wake up and I got to hear your voice. <laughs> All right, well, call me, call me later, but I All right. go into the meeting. All right, have fun. We'll All right, bye. Bye. Captain Cody, I appreciate you calling us back and getting on the line with us so we can talk a little bit about drum i love talking about fish and cody is cody is crazy cody is crazy smart when it comes to fishing for any kind of species when it comes to targeting any kind of species he's done it for so long and he's has he's just a wealth a wealth of knowledge and it's it's really funny because he thinks outside the box a lot of times and because he thinks outside the box and he's creative he's almost like i wouldn't say like a mozart but he's almost like a chef you know he has a creative way to target and look for fish and and he's very sensitive and detail oriented on what species want and different techniques and how to fish for them so i always refer to him i refer to him a lot and use him for a great reference when it comes to fishing for any any species or fishing for any type of water whether even fresh or salt or inshore or offshore wealth wealth of knowledge uh, his information, his contact information is below in the description section too in case anybody would like to donate to his nonprofit. It is down there. And uh, thanks again, Cody. But yeah, I mean, this time of year, the drums, the black drums are running. The bull reds are moving. It, it's fun in the surf. And it, you don't have to have the best water conditions either. And a lot of times people are, are we're waiting for the best water conditions. We're waiting for the best weather. And those big Big, big bull reds, they love that that strong current. They they love it when it's stormy outside and it's windy. You can really get into them. And the black drum like it too. They, they don't care. You know, it can be dirty water and, and you're still going to hook up. You're still going to find them. And it's just it's just a lot, a lot of fun. And yes, this is most of this is catch and release because... The, the black drum are, are oversized, 20, 40 pounders are oversized, and you can only tag one bull red a year here in Texas, and, uh, you know, from my understanding, the meat's not that great. You know, these are the big baby makers, so you want to make sure you vent them, you want to make sure you release them properly and get them safe back in the water, but it's just a, a, 
a fun thing to do is to catch those big fish but hey i hope you enjoy this content i appreciate you guys i really do i i i want to look just sincerely into each one of your eyes and tell you thank you come back i'll miss you No, but seriously, thanks for clicking on this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please go ahead and do so. Like the video, leave a comment. All of that stuff really, really helps out a lot. And don't forget, in the description section of this video, I do have, I will throw out some suggested videos. So if you're like, hey, I want to watch you, you know, fish for some black drum, or I want to watch something else, or, or click on a link, you know, maybe some sunglasses, or, or one of your pro staff like saltwater so you know there's links in the description section of this video and uh that that will take you over to some more of that detailed information because it's not over yet you know you can watch texas all water fishing all day uh, i'll pop up uh, at the end of this video i'll pop up a subscribe button and a suggested video for you and you can just keep watching all day long just sit there and like binge watch Texas all water fishing. It's great. It's good for you. You grow your knowledge, your fishing knowledge, which just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger.